Hey everybody, this is Longo, and in this video we are going to cover solving some harder equations in the world of logarithms and exponents. Um, you can probably do these, but they are going to be a little bit more challenging than the normal ones we did in the previous video. So, if you would like, you can pause the video and just give them a shot on your own. But if you want to just watch me do it, let's go. So the first example is one of those examples where you have two different bases. And remember, in order to solve exponents, you should try to get them to have the same base. If not, you need to do some logs and stuff like that. This one, we actually can change to the same base, a base of 2. We can rewrite 4 as 2 squared, and then, of course, we still have that 2x exponent. But the only tricky part with this one is the 8 is in the denominator. You have to remember that if you want a reciprocal, you use a negative exponent. So 8 is still 2 to the third power, but since we want it to go back to the top, that's a negative 3 exponent. And we still have our x plus 1. Now we have two exponents that are, they have the same base of 2. So when they have the same base, yes, the shortcut is to just set the exponents equal to one another. I do want to remind you that what you are really doing to get rid of that 2 is you're taking log base 2 of both sides. Now again, if the bases are the same on both sides, you really don't have to do that step because obviously 2 raised to the same number is going to give you the same number. So um, all we're going to do now is simplify. So since those 2's go away, we have 2 times 2x, which is 4x, and that's equal to, distribute your negative 3, you have a negative 3x minus 3. Add 3x to both sides, so 7x is equal to a negative 3, which means x is equal to a negative 3 sevenths. Boom, you are done. In the next example, Whenever you're about to solve and you have the same log on both sides, what you need to do first is make sure you condense each side. So this 3 that's sticking in front of log base 2, what we want to do is condense that side. So that's going to end up being log 2 of x cubed is equal to log 2 of 27. Now, again, just like the last problem, if you have the same log on both sides, we can just set x cubed equal to 27. Then we're just going to cube root both sides. Since it's an odd root, we do not have to worry about our plus or minus, and we get x is equal to 3, and we are done. Now, like I said, the step we would have skipped over here to get rid of a log base 2 on both sides, what you really did was exponentiated both sides um, with 2. So, and then 2 raised to the log base 2 would have canceled, 2 raised to the log base 2 would have canceled. Now again, I just want to remind you of that because when the sides do not have the same log or the same base, you're going to have to do stuff like that. Um, next two examples. Um, the one on the left over here is a little tricky because it is going to require you to factor. The one on the right is actually a pretty tough problem because it's very different from anything that we've done before. Um, so again, if you would like to take a moment to press pause and try them on your own, you can. Otherwise, let's go. Like I just got done saying, you have to condense each side before you attempt to solve. So this over here, we're going to just rewrite as log base 4 of x times x plus 3 is equal to 1. I just mentioned if you have log on the same side, then you can cancel, but this one doesn't. So you have to get rid of log base 4 just how we talked about previously. In order to do that, you have to exponentiate both sides. So that becomes 4 raised to log base 4 and 4 raised to the first power. So that's going to cancel our log over on this side. And that means we're going to have x squared plus 3x, if you want to just distribute that x in there now, is equal to 4. Bring the 4 back over, set it equal to 0. x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. The only way to solve that is by factoring x plus 4 and x minus 1. 
will give us a negative 4 and a positive 3. And we get x is equal to a negative 4 and 1. Now, this is where we're going to take a moment to remind you that you cannot take logs of negative numbers. So, whenever you see a negative for an x value, and really for all logs, you, what you should do is check to see if it actually works in the original problem. If you take a negative 4 and substitute it back into here, we have log base 4 of a negative 4, which is not possible. We cannot take logs of zeros or negatives. You can only take the log of a positive number. So, this guy is known as an extraneous solution. So your only answer is x equals 1. Now there are different notations for writing extraneous solutions. Um, one way is in squiggle brackets you write the number that works comma negative 4 in parentheses. That means negative 4 is a solution you get but it doesn't work in the actual problem. Okay, that is known as an extraneous solution. Um, if it doesn't tell you to write in set notation, again, this is called set notation, your solution, comma, your extraneous solutions. Uh, if it doesn't tell you to write it that way, you can just say x is equal to 1 and show that you crossed off the negative 4, or just say that negative 4 is extraneous, whatever you want. Um, but if it tells you to use set notation, this is what you want to use. All right. Next example. Now this is the one that's going to it's going to have a very ugly answer and we're not even going to type it in our calculator. We're going to leave it exact. And the reason why this one is so different is cuz there is absolutely no way we can turn a 2 into a 7. And there's no way we can turn a 7 into a 2. And we can't take the log of both sides and get one of them to disappear but have the, so this one is going to be tricky. So what you're actually going to do for this problem is you are going to take log base 10, just a regular log, of both sides. That's our first step. And now what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this with some algebra, and we are going to, this time, expand. So by expanding, we're going to bring our exponents to the front. So this is x times log of 2 is equal to x plus 3 times the log of 7. And we are going to continue to expand that right side. There's nothing else we can do with the left right now. So we have x log 2 is equal to, now we are going to expand this some more and say that this is x log 7 plus 3 log 7. Basically, we just distributed log 7 um, because this is an exponent or a multiplier in the front. So we expanded some more. And now we're going to get x on the same side because we are solving for x. So to do that, we're going to subtract x log 7 from both sides. And that will give us x log 2 minus x log 7. That is now equal to 3 log 7. Since we have the x on the same side now, we can factor it out. So if we factor out an x, that leaves us with log 2 minus log 7, and of course still equal to 3 log 7. But to solve for x, we just need to divide this from both sides. So our final answer is going to be x is equal to 3 log 7 over the quantity of log 2 minus log 7. And if I wanted you to type that in your graphing calculator, I would tell you to round. Um, but a lot of times we're just going to ask you to leave it as an exact answer, and that's exactly what you would do. Just leave that as you see it. Okay? Last example, we're going to have variables in our answer because we have too many variables going on here. This is like simplifying an equation or solving with respect to other variables. So for this one, if I want to solve for x, um, we still have natural log for all of these. So we're just going to get x on the left only. So the first thing we want to do is add that to the other side. Um, so that's going to give us 
ln of x is equal to ln of 5 um, plus 2 ln of y minus ln of z plus 1. Why did I put it in the middle? There's no reason for why I did that. You could have put it in the beginning. You could have put it at the end. Um, this way is just going to help you see how to condense it because when you want to write your final answers, you want to write them in appropriate notation. Um, and I'm just thinking a step ahead of you. So now we can condense the right side over here. So we have ln of x is equal to the natural log of 5 y squared over z plus 1. See, I was just thinking a step ahead of you. If you would have put it in front, you would have had y squared times 5, and you would have written it as 5y squared anyway because that's just proper notation. And the last thing you need to do is get rid of our natural logs. Since it's a natural log on both sides, they can just go away. If you had to show all work, remember you are exponentiating with a base of e, um, and that would make the natural logs go away. So x is equal to 5y squared over z plus 1, and then you would be done. Okay, so that's it for this video. Again, it was a little long because we need to make sure we can handle these tougher equations. Um, you had all the basis or the foundation to begin with from the previous solving video, except for maybe the one with uh, 2x equals 7 to the x plus 3. Uh, but, you know, we're good to go now. So anyway, this is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.